I'm Susan Regan, your host for Connecticut Valley Views. And today we have two guests. Our first guest is Mark Wilson. He is the creator of the Reach Foundation and Ty Ritter, originator of the Project Child Save Organization. Welcome, gentlemen. A pleasure Thank to have you, you here. Nice you, to be you've here. had a busy week. Very busy. TCP Highlands and all That's that. That's right. Yeah, a couple of concerts to help support the kids. Eddie Money on Wednesday night, June 21st. And we had uh, Huey Lewis last night. And I think we were in bed, what, last Monday was the last time we've been in bed. But, so, uh, it's, so it's celebrities all the way around. Golfers celebrities around, and, yes. And stardom and music and everything. So that's great. Well, we have some very serious stuff to talk about today. But I'd like you to tell me, Mark, a little bit about your organization. Sure. You started with your wife, Wendy. Yeah, correct. Yeah, in... Uh, uh, 1999, I had a company, uh, Power Resource Group. Uh, we were a company of one, and we were developing power plants in Oklahoma. And uh, once we reached some success with that, first thing my wife and I decided to do was to form Power, um, the Reach Foundation and to help children in need. And we started out primarily with education, helping children that kind of fell between the cracks. They weren't the, uh, the smartest. They weren't the, the dumbest. Mm -hmm. They weren't black or white or green or yellow. There was just something about these children that, or these young people mm -hmm. that, uh, in, especially in their essays, you saw something there that they might make a difference in the world, that they might pay it forward. And we also saw school districts that were struggling with money, so we set up educational foundations in those school districts we provide seed money or maybe matching money, and if the community are we talking like charter in, schools or magnet uh, no, schools or no, something no, different? No, uh, you know, I wish we could be that large, right, and, right. and we can't because at that time, and it still mm -hmm. mainly is our personal money that we've used. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we these were we, and we can't do everything. Mm -hmm. So we were focusing in, in at the time in communities where we lived or worked. Um, so in Texarkana, Arkansas, was the first place we did this where I grew up, and my parents were both teachers. And I knew that even in 2001, an average English teacher salary was $21,000, and they were being asked still to use their personal funds for school. So we provided money there for so special programs. So you were programs. supplementing correct, what the kids needed. Correct. In order so to get a the, the astronomy class now has a telescope, oh, for example. All right. But sometimes as simple as that, mm -hmm. uh, we provided funds for. Uh, uh, after school education facilities where the parents could come back with their children because oftentimes the parents can't help the kids because they didn't finish their education. And so send your children so help back with home, and help with homework, correct, correct. And that expanded into helping children with uh, disease, uh, which I won't say was a, a, a divine inspiration, but uh, one evening I couldn't sleep, had a big meeting the next day. My parents were gonna hear me speak and I was going to be awarded mm. for building a power plant in Oklahoma and looked for something to, to enjoy and soften the mood at 2 o'clock in the morning, looked for a Seinfeld, a mash or something, <laughs> turned on the television, and there's Marlo Thomas talking about sick kids. And I'm, I don't want to see this. I want to see mash or something. Sure. Change the channel, and there was Marlo Thomas. Really? Change the channel, and there's Marlo Thomas. And she said, won't you help? Won't you pick up the phone? And I was kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Reached over, pick up the phone. We got involved with St. Jude Children's Hospital through a friend here uh, who does a wine tasting for Make-A-Wish at the governor's mansion at the time, asked me to go to a wine tasting. Two weeks later, we went to a, uh, a gala for Make-A-Wish, uh, enjoyed what they were doing, loved what they were doing, got involved with Make-A-Wish, and now on the board of Make-A-Wish here in Connecticut. And it just has expanded from there. It, it's just gotten to the point that we love children so much and there's so many children in our own country, in our own backyards that have needs uh, that we decide to focus our attention just on children in need, whether it be physical, social, or, or financial need. Now, you and your wife developed this together, but do you have other volunteers or other people who support the work that yes, you're we doing? Yes, do. we have. We have uh, well, my staff, uh, there are no paid employees at the REACH Foundation. Uh, we also own several businesses here in the area. And those employees oftentimes uh, work on behalf of REACH, or some of them work full-time on behalf of REACH. And we have a lot of volunteers that help us when we need it. And of course, people like Ty, Yes. Uh, we brought him here to promote his cause, and unfortunately, he spends a lot of time working for the REACH Foundation, but uh, a wonderful human being and a great asset to us. And yeah, we couldn't do it without our friends and our, and our volunteers. Well, um, you and Ty were recent guests on State and Church with former Governor Rowland to promote the TCP Highlands mm -hmm. uh, Travelers Golf Tournament and to, and to discuss, I guess, this week. Now, you were here specifically in Connecticut, Ty, because you originate in California, correct? That's where correct. your base of operations are? Yes, ma'am. So you were here for what purpose this week? To do anything I could to help reach because it's just, 
You know, when it comes to children, it's not about Republicans, Democrats, Jews, Muslims, Christians. It's about the children, whatever they need, whatever they have to have. And, and Wendy and, and Mark try to cover everything they need as much as they can. And that's how and, I and, and I have to, I'll have to jump in like I will mm. many, many times mm. during this discussion. Mm. Please do. It was a very difficult decision for Ty to be here. And we haven't gotten into his organization yet. But uh, what he does, there was an opportunity to uh, perform one of his missions, one of his rescues this week. And he knew the exposure that he would get here. We were hoping the exposure we would get here would allow him to do more, so many more rescues and missions that he made the decision to come here instead of leading a team in, um, which was a hard decision I, I can only imagine Because you're him on to the make. front lines a lot of these times, I take it, Ty. Um, they've only been without me once, so. What would you say, each one of you, I'm mm -hmm. asking this, was at some point there was a catalyst in your lives there was something that said this is what i want to do this is my main objective Can i think, think both of, of us were kind of walking along minding our own business yeah. it <laughs> we just sort of happened yeah. I mean, some people, people ask me was your child taken but no exactly no uh, i got involved one time uh, uh, with an incident got very lucky and and it's word of mouth and it just went on and on and because of my prior work uh, with the military and the government, um, it, I had the contacts, and it just evolved. And, so and it, it was, it it was really today. a situation then where you were drawn in just by the circumstances of the moment. It wasn't something that kind of yeah, you and, like an epiphany. It was more a gradual drawing. And then came across uh, a child pornography mm -hmm. uh, case, and and looked into it more, and I myself would rather be accused of murder than what <laughs> these people do to children. I thought it was the worst thing in the world, and, and that's why I've got tunnel vision when it comes mm. to that. Now, as far as your support system goes, your, your manpower, what type of uh, people do you have working for you? How have you been able to generate that assistance? Well, no one uh, takes a salary at Project Child Save, and uh, the people, the quality of people, my team members, most of them are former Green Berets or Marine Corps Recon, Navy SEALs. And um, I get asked all the time, can I, can I be a part of it? And uh, it just, it's just grown that way. So these are people, I'm going to say men and women, um, mm -hmm. who are retired from the military and are looking to help you. Um, not necessarily retired, but okay. done. Done, uh, you with know, their service. Uh, right. Yeah, they're, they're not old enough mm -hmm. to retire. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want my team yeah. looking like, they're all no. my age. Well, yeah. let's call them seasoned right. and experienced. Yes. Uh, what oh, difference, yeah. I mean, you're only as, as old they as They follow me anywhere and do. they make me look really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Now, how did you two actually meet? What, what, well, we were actually, um, I was working to put on a, a, a holiday concert mm -hmm. and and if I could the reason we do concerts everybody's like uh, even uh, a good friend of mine Jim Koblick said why do you do concerts mm -hmm. Mark? why don't you just write a check to charity and uh, because concerts are very difficult the return on concerts are very small but people won't come hear me speak but they'll come hear Huey Lewis or Eddie Money or Earth, Wind right. and Fire You're sing. Right. it's a drawing card so you come into my venue you come to listen to these guys sing I'll lock the door behind you, and now you have to listen to me first. Mm -hmm. And it gives us the opportunity to talk to people. So uh, we were working on trying to put a holiday show on this past Christmas mm -hmm. and met with a uh, gentleman who uh, worked in the music industry and was a friend of Ty's, and he was helping us with ours, and he was getting ready to retire from that industry uh, before our concert, though he sure. would be the person in charge until he retired. Mm -hmm. Said he was gonna get into the ministry, he had a calling, and uh, I started talking, he asked about the Reach Foundation, and we started talking, and uh, I don't wanna go too far with, you know, uh, I, I am, uh, I believe in God, I'm, I, I hope I'm a Christian, and I hope I'm a decent Christian, but I'm not a church-going Christian, but mm -hmm. uh, this gentleman looked at me and said, oh my God, you're Mark. And I said, what do you mean I'm Mark? Recognized and you. No, he huh? said uh, another f acquaintance of ours oh. uh, had a dream one night that Mark would come and help Ty. And I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, yeah. say that this is divine 
but I'm not, I, so many weird things happen around me and around us mm -hmm. that I don't question this anymore. Uh, this happened, I think, in June or July, and I didn't meet this gentleman I'm talking about until September, October. Mm -hmm. And he just said, oh my God, you're Mark. And, so how uh, long have you two been working together? Since September, October. Really? I met oh. Ty maybe in October. Mm -hmm. And um, the Reach Foundation, mm -hmm. through Mark and Wendy, have sponsored, totally sponsored, two uh, rescue uh, now 11 children. What's involved, and when we're talking about rescuing, let's kind of get to the heart of this, Ty. When we're talking about rescuing children, are we talking about U.S. children that have been taken from this country and you're going to get them someplace else? Is that what we're primarily talking about here? Well, it's happening everywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, Vanity Fair this month came out with an article. They just broke up a network in, in Hartford. Mm -hmm. it's, it's everywhere. And uh, if I have the money to rescue a, a child, and I have an American child or other child, I'll get the American child first, because I think you need to have your own home mm -hmm. in order before mm -hmm. you go helping others. I agree. Um, but. Uh, when we go after a child, the principal child, whatever uh, she is, there's always more there, and we won't leave any behind. So, so we we end up with with uh, children from all over the world. However, it's happening here in America more than you know. The Justice Department, who are notoriously conservative with their numbers just released uh, that uh, 2,000 children are missing in America a day. So while we've been talking, the children are gone. going out the door. Now is this because the parents are not watching, the parents are perhaps selling them, or well, what's it's, the it's major a combination reason for their... Of, it's a combination of many things, and, and, and uh, uh, not all of them are ending up in other countries. Of course, there's runaways, throwaways, and and that, but uh, um, I'm busy enough to say that a lot of them are leaving the country. And, and it's, they're not, uh, you asked a question about, uh, and I apologize, I've had a senior moment. No, that's okay, you've had a long week too. Well, let me just go back to yeah, this go back though. To that. I, I wanna ask my, Never my, mind. my question about when we're talking about these children, it doesn't seem as though the media wants to talk about this subject. It well, it's kind of like Hollywood, too. They don't mind making a movie about an 18 or 22-year-old, like the movie Taken, right. but they don't want to deal with the real problem, mm. which is the little ones. Ty has rescued a child as young as three years, two months old, that has been having sex with men. Three years and two months old. And uh, it's... Now, uh, and, yeah. and, and, and how do you find out that this child is missing? I mean, if, it's, if the parents have not been selling it and the child has just been simply taken from their home or stolen from a baby carriage or whatever mm -hmm. it is, how do you determine, how, do, do the parents come to you? Uh, and do, do they not go to local authorities? Do they not go to the uh, federal administration? Do they not go to the FBI? How do they end up? I've actually had parents come to me first and, and I tell them they have to go to the authorities, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but, you know, the FBI is, is um, bound by geography, you know, to, to have the jurisdiction in many areas, uh, to have the manpower, you know, it's a business like any other. Mm -hmm. Quite often, if a child's out of the country, it's a missing person. That's much easier than, you know, a kidnapping. Uh, they don't want it on their books. Uh, I have the highest respect in the world for the officer mm -hmm. on the street or the agent, but the bureaucracy behind them uh, is, is another. It, you're sort of a PI without borders, like the doctors without borders, right? I well, mean, you can. I you know, rarely, I rarely find the children. It's generally private investigators, and I don't go to the parents. They have to come to me, and it's generally after they've spent all their money on on. Uh, posters and private investigators and psychics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and have been ripped off uh, and that's what the charity does. So they hear about you and they they, they, you. they have to prove to us that they've got, without putting them on mm -hmm. the streets, uh, mm -hmm. that they've 
put up as much money as they can, mm -hmm. and then we make up the difference. And, and as Ty said, the, you know, full respect for, for the FBI and the local police. Mm -hmm. They're also bound by our borders. As, as Ty said, you, we don't have the jurisdiction to go to Panama or mm -hmm. some other country to, to extract a child. Mm -hmm. uh, and our government to do it, uh, we have to ask the permission to go in. And though we don't accuse any country of being corrupt or any you know, certain individuals are always corrupt, but there is corruption in this world. There's corruption here in the United States, but it, and it's rampant in a lot of third world mm -hmm. countries and other countries. Mm -hmm. And for us, to, for our government to go in and recover a child, there's treaties involved. True. You know, and by the True. time they yeah, get the permission to go in, they're bound by the bureaucracy of the international relationships. And at that point, that child's gone. Well, let, let, let's talk about how bad this is. When we're talking, we're talking about three-year-olds mm -hmm. and five-year-olds, whatever. For, so, so there's prostitution, there's child pornography. The older girls end up uh, either in in whorehouses. Mm -hmm or they're taken to gentlemen's clubs. Mm -hmm. Throughout South America, there are gentlemen's clubs in the islands. And for uh, local girls, and some of the girls want to be there, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but many of them do not. Um, are they mistreated or are they sort of kept like as long as they keep prized animals, I guess? As long as they keep uh, in line, they're, they're treated halfway decent. Uh, the older ones, mm -hmm. uh, because these clubs, it's, it's almost like a golf resort type thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and these people, they will pay for a local girl. It's a four-day minimum, mm -hmm. and they will pay uh, um, 15 to $3,500 for those four days. If they want an American, uh, European, Scandinavian, it, it, the price goes way up, uh, 15000 18000 I've heard. Uh, and and um, are you bound by windows of time? Are there sometimes moments where you've only got so much time to operate in, and you have to move quickly? And that has tell happened. Tell us some of the mm -hmm. kind of stumbling things that you run into when you've got this operation going on. Well, just not very long ago, I was given three days. I was uh, told by. Um, Interpol helps me on occasion, and they, they said that they would wait three days before they would alert the host country. And Interpol does that because they're sick and tired of reporting these crimes to the different countries and nothing being done about it. Mm -hmm. So um, some people at Inter Interpol help me that way, and if I can do it, I will. And the problem with that, though, is that they're often ill-prepared when they go in, mm -hmm. or they may not realize they're ill-prepared until mm -hmm. they get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they may be going in looking for one child, thinking there's three or four. They go in uh, ill-prepared, mm -hmm. and they might find six or seven or eight children. And so ill-prepared, more kids than you think, but I, again, they move forward with the mission. So it, once you go in there, we're, we're talking now that your, your men have weapons, correct? They are to, to go in and see what they see. Now, what, do you break up this group, or do you just simply demand to take the children, or what kind of happens under the circumstances? I would love to walk up to the door, knock on it, and say, could I please have little Susie? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Those children are worth a lot of money to them. And these people, if they lose the children, they have to answer for it. And now even the drug cartels are involved, some really violent people. Quite often, they will run away. We don't set out to hurt anyone, but once those children are in our custody, to protect the children, to see to it no more harm comes to them or to my team, we will do whatever we have to do to make sure that that doesn't happen and that we can bring the children back safely. In a, in a video program that I saw on Ty, he made the comment, the, the, first, the only offensive thing they do is enter the compound, and after that it's defensive. Uh, they're going in to rescue children, and I'd be the first one to kick a door in if, if I was able to anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I don't want him to have to carry me out. But it's, uh, you, you, what he says is, is right, that they have to defend themselves. And they went in for the children, they're going to defend the children. Uh, and if they can, they have ways of protecting those children uh, from any, you know, I guess, straight, any damage. But sure. uh, oftentimes there's more children they expect. And 
they just get them out the best they can. All right. Now, you have the children. You've got what the group, the number that you've been able to rescue, and you fly back and you come back to the States with them. Now, obviously, if the child has been one that has been specifically the parents have been looking for, you return them to the family. Um, what about the ones where there is no family involved and simply it happened to be a child that came with the group? Where do they go? What happens to them? I parents? have several uh, orphanages in different parts of the world, including here in the United States, that will take any child that I don't have a parent for. They are extremely well funded, and uh, one of them is funded by the largest brewing company in, in South America. And um, uh, they also hire investigators to determine whether the children were kidnapped, and it's not that hard to do. Was a police report filed in this, even in a little village or mm -hmm. wherever? or were the children sold. And if, uh, if they have to stay with the orphanage, uh, uh, two of them, uh, my favorites, uh, they have homes on these orphanages, on, on the land, mm -hmm. and they have a, a mother-father team. They can have two of their own children. And I went into one of the houses, nine bedrooms, and uh, uh, they have Olympic-sized swimming pool, both of them. One's a ranch, one's a farm. Mm -hmm. So these, these kids have to uh, get up and milk the chickens before they go to school and mm -hmm. do all the farm work, and, and it's well, a, that, a great life for them. Yeah, that, that actually gives them some real, that gives them real life skills, that mm -hmm. gives them a basis for a living that's a day to day. That's a real touchstone to be able to mm -hmm. be involved, to be almost a family type atmosphere. Now, how many children have you been able to rescue in all the time that you've been doing this time? I don't have an exact number, I know it's over 200. And when you say that you, you folks need to raise money for that, are you able to share with us, you know, do you have an objective, a goal for this year? Do you set it up on an annual basis? Do you set up based on the number of rescues you're anticipating? Is there a goal that you're looking to meet? I have in a goal. In either cases. I have a goal. Right. And Ty doesn't even know this. And it's just, I, I, I there mm, it is. Because mm. uh, you're I, really... You're really his base of well, financial. Well, I, I've kind of wherewithal. I've taken that <laughs> position from him, and, and I've taken over to be his mouthpiece yes. as well. When Ty and I met, he said, "You know, people don't want him doing mm. what he does, mm. especially those people. They want to stop him because they're run, he's running their business." Right. And there was a little discussion that they may want to stop me if I mm -hmm. am too loud. And I said, well, I got to think about that. And then I called him back that night and I said, how tall of a mountain can you find me? Because mm -hmm. I, and I also said to him, Ty, looking in his eyes, I said, I believe what you're saying, but it's so surreal. You have to prove it to me. And he says, uh, you want to go with me? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. um, but then he called me a week or two later and they had a child. And I said, I want to fund that. Mm -hmm. And we did. And about Three, four weeks later, I got a phone call that they had rescued, I believe, four children that time. And, and you um, got pictures. And we got pictures mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I think it was one of the one of the times that they actually took photographs because going in with camera often sure. is, uh, causes more damage for them because it's something else, another piece of equipment that they have to worry about. Right, of course. Um, but I have a goal of raising a quarter million dollars for Ty by, by the end of the year. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do it. Uh, except with help from yes. folks like yourselves and yes. help from you folks. Right. Because um, there are children, Ty knows where there are a certain number of children right now. And I, I, I will keep writing the checks as long as he keeps finding the kids, but I will run out of money someday. Yeah. And, and my wife says it's going to be sooner than you think. <laughs> and, and my staff tells me that as well. But, but, but uh, Americans are great on giving, and I think as long as we can get the word out, that's the main thing. And, and it... They are. But because this, this is one, not a subject that people want to talk about. But this is a difficult well subject. And we've talked to a lot of people this week, a lot of people, and they're telling us they're going to contact us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and, and I don't mean any, any disrespect for anybody. Mm -hmm. Not one person reached in their pocket and gave us a dollar. Really? Not one person. And it's upsetting uh, that any one person has to give a lot of money. Well, it goes back to if I keep giving, you won't. Mm -hmm. is taken care of and mm -hmm. I don't mean me but those who are giving well I think the and, awareness level is the big thing and to well, honestly understand that yeah. there's someone who can accomplish the goal mm -hmm. there's someone who's attempting right. to fund it 
and that this is so secular in nature that if we're trying to take care of our children, right. every person can right. understand who has a child of their own. Well, we, we just, I was just asked to come to a local school here in Simsbury, mm -hmm. uh, down the road, mm -hmm. and it was a fourth grade class, and they wanted to learn about Make-A-Wish. And so, I, I'm, as I said, I'm on the board of Connecticut Make-A-Wish, spoke to them about Make-A-Wish, and they wanted to raise money. And they said, how much money do we have to raise for you to take it? Mm -hmm. And I said, a penny. And they said, what do you mean a penny? And I said, well, if you raise a penny and we get 100 classes to raise a penny and 100 times 100 classes, and of course they take out right, their pencils right, and right, stuff, and it goes to what we talked about before mm -hmm. we went live, um, me to the power of we. Everybody, the concert I did, mm -hmm. we're at a concert, if I have 10, 20, 30,000 people at a concert, 30,000 would be wonderful. And we say, you know, who's had a beer today? You know, yes. ah, who's yeah, had right. two beers today? Ah, yeah. who wants another beer? Well, hold your $10 up high right. and now put it in your pocket. Right. Because look what we just did. And these, some of these, are, I think our first mission was $35,000. This last one uh, that we just did this week was $8,500. Mm -hmm. $8,500. And we rescued seven girls. Seven girls. Seven girls. That's less than, I mean, that's a little over $1,000 per child. And as Ty has said, and I love this one, we're not trying to cure a disease. We're not trying to grant a wish. We're taking, he says it differently. I'm saying we took a dead child from hell and brought them back to life. Exactly. And for me... It's everything. It, and my, the situation this man's put me in is I am now damned if I do, damned if I don't. Mm -hmm. If he says, I found a child, I'm like, if I don't write a check or help him, mm -hmm. that child's gone forever. And if I do help him, he could be gone forever. This is true. This is true. Are and they, his team. Are they mostly... I make a choice. The children don't get a choice. Right. Yeah. Now, is it we're talking And he mostly... makes a choice to call me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking mostly girls here. The, yes. the, the, that's yeah. basically the uh, going. But there was, again, there's a, a video program on, on Ty, and there was a, a, an episode there where they were targeting a brother-sister mm -hmm. uh, for pornography, mm -hmm. an older girl, younger brother. Uh, and really got to me, just happened to be my children's age. Yeah. And I just realized it hits how, home, how it? sick that. Well, you know, I, and, and I'll say this to your, to your listeners and your viewers out here, and it's this easy to me. What would you give to get your child back? Of, of course. Well, you know, I, th I, I think the thing is for both of you is that when you are rescuing these young people, the fact is is that you are also rescue. You are helping to bring to light what's going on and what's becoming mm -hmm. not actually. It's becoming a broader problem in our society because society is actually sees so much of it that after a while it accepts it. Well, if we I, see a Steven Seagal internet, movie, we kind right. of go, oh, well, you know, well, whatever. Well, we, we had the internet, too. Exactly. Where it used to, you know, you had to go into the dark back room. Yeah, exactly. And you put it in a brown yes, paper yeah. bag, yes. you snuck it out under your yes, trench coat. Yes, yeah. Now you just go home, shut the door of your office or your bedroom, whatever, right. turn on the computer. And I believe pornography is like a drug, that it, you get addicted, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two... The, that high is not high enough anymore. That's I need to get exactly a little higher. Correct. So you get tired with this and you go that next mm -hmm. level and mm -hmm. the next level and who knows where it's taking you. I think some good people have been ruined, you know, by mm -hmm. the, being allowed uh, to this. But uh, Well, it's boring to be good these days. They're kind of the yeah. Charlie Sheen thing. I mean, it's a, it's as though we're yeah. addicted to page six news. But, but I mean, there's being good and there's being good. Yeah. And and you know, I you asked a question earlier, and I'll answer for yeah. you now. Yep. Why did I get into this? And and I laughingly tell people that um, I spent 50 years locking the gate, mm -hmm. and I want to spend 50 years looking for a key. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not necessarily. I'm not that kind of. I'm not that bad mm -hmm. of a person. I'm not. Right. Um, but I'm no saint. Mm -hmm. I'm a human. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you don't have to be a saint to do saintly things. And, and that's the other message we're trying to give people is that it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, there's good in you someplace. And, and look for if it. If you can, can contribute. Right. Well, talking about contributing, we would like to give the information. Ty, mm -hmm. I'd like to give your website, if I may. And that is, and this, and on there, people can donate through the website. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, All right. PayPal or an address to send checks. Okay, very good. And that's www.projectchildsave.org. Correct. 
correct? correct. And also, Mark, obviously, yes. uh, we're going to give your website, which is www.thereachfoundation.org. And, and you said it correctly, but I'll stress the REACH Foundation. Okay. So we need the the before the REACH. Right. Okay. In a simpler way, if they would like, because of our relationship with travelers, mm -hmm. and thank you travelers for this, uh, because we are still a private foundation because most of the funding is from my family, uh, you can now text uh, REACH to 50555 and that'll make a $10 donation. <coughs> uh, and you do have an opportunity to do it two or three times in that one single phone call. And that's a simpler way for people. And we thank travelers for that ability to well, do that. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I do appreciate both of you taking time out to come and sure. visit uh, Connecticut Valley Views. Uh, we certainly hope we're helping to get the word out. Um, You've been wonderful. Well, we, we're delighted to have you here and uh, especially take time. You've sure. had such a busy week. And a uh, safe trip home to you, Ty, when you go thank back you. to California. And you're just in Farmington, so you'll be good. Hope to see you some more. <laughs> okay. you know, great. Very good. And for our viewers, you can see all of our programs on our website at www.ctvalleyviews.com. And you can email me your questions and comments to ConnecticutValleyViews at Cox.net. This is Susan Regan thanking you for joining me and bringing proof to the people.